Hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm Edie Lewis and welcome back to Edie Lewis Reviews. Before we get started, please hit that subscribe button and by the end of the video, I expect you to hit that like and if you have any comments or questions, please make them in the comments section. So, it's March. This is our second video in March, actually, and uh, <clears throat> we're going to switch gears back to Gothic Romance for a bit, anyway, at least for this time. And we're doing a Victoria Holt novel, which is the only Victoria Holt novel I've read. And this is called The Shadow of the Lynx. I will admit this book may be a little hard to find. You... Uh, may have to look at like used bookstores or your local library or I know you can get it because I just looked it up you can get it at audible audible has it so if you like audiobooks you can find shadow of the links at on audible but rather than that it doesn't look like they print this one anymore unfortunately which I didn't know that until now and I didn't just finish reading this I actually read this quite a while ago is technically last year uh, sometime, but I don't remember when, but, so, anyway, this is, uh, the only Victoria Holt novel I've read, like I said, and it was published in 1971, it is gothic romance, and many people consider her to be the queen of gothic romance, so, those are the people that consider to be the queen of gothic, or gothic romance, so, Mary Stewart, who we've done one book by, uh, Nine Coaches Waiting, which, if you haven't read that uh, book and you haven't seen that review, check out my review for that. So, um, anyway, so uh, like I said, this is gothic romance, and it's very much I feel in the style of Jane Eyre, which is kind of my favorite gothic novel probably of all time, and I have not done a review on that yet. Um. But the, the beginning of this book very much remind me of Jane Eyre with the uh, character situation where she is uh, orphaned. So I guess I'll give my synopsis that I wrote. Uh, Nora Tamison, I'm not really sure if that's how her name is pronounced, but that's uh, my best guess, goes away to school uh, in England. Uh, this takes place in Victorian England, by the way, for parts of the book. While her father travels out of England to find gold in the Australian gold rush, but her life changes when she receives word that her father has died, which starts a long uh, battle, or not necessarily battle, but a long hatred of gold, because she... Uh, blames gold and the greed associated with gold to be the death of her father, or the cause of the death of her father. Nora learns that she is to become... Sorry, I'm a glass son. Uh, she's to be cared for by her father's business partner, ex-convict, who is known simply by the name of the Lynx. After her arrival in her new surroundings, Nora meets the Lynx, who is a strict, overbearing, and uh, commanding man whose power has very much gone to his head. Uh, she finds herself involved, uh, in love with both the Lynx and his son, who's uh, probably about, I'm thinking... At least maybe 10 years her senior or so. I don't know. And uh, she has to struggle with a reconciliation between loving both of them. As well as she becomes involved in this very strange master plan. This uh, well, strange is in mysterious master plan the Lynx has involving both gold and a several years old grudge. So without giving too much away. Uh, this does have the mysterious house, just like most Gothic stories do, um, because she actually comes to two houses in, in it. on her way to Australia when she actually meets the son, whose name escapes me. And um, I'm thinking he's named after his father. Whatever, I, I'm thinking it's Charles, but I can't remember. 
And then she comes to a house in Australia, uh, Lynx's house, which looks exactly like the house in England. So that's kind of weird and mysterious. The house kind of plays a big part in it. Um, the Lynx has at least... I don't want to give too much away, so I'll just say this. He has at least two children, a daughter and a son, and that's as much as I'm going to say right there on that fact, because, yeah, it's kind of a good boy. And uh, the book is told in, like, five parts. The first part is the biggest. It's, like, the first 180-some pages. It's told, told by Nora. And then we shift to a woman who we meet briefly in part one called uh, Minta. And then it jumps back and forth between Nora and Minta for the rest of the book, concluding with Nora. Um, there is at least two mysteries. There's the main mystery that goes on with the first half of the book, and then we get a second mystery as we jump to Eng back to England, and we start hearing uh, Minta's narrative uh, alongside Nora. So... But uh, the reason why it was so Jane Eyre to me is because the time period in which it takes place, take, uh, it takes place in England in the 1800s, later than um, Jane Eyre does. But, but that and it being told by such a strong-willed woman, just like uh, much like Jane Eyre, and that her situation being orphaned at the beginning of the story, pretty much, and having to go away to a school and a... She spends some time there. I'm thinking for some reason she does start teaching, kind of like Jane Eyre, for a little bit before she learns that she has a benefactor in Australia. So, so that's uh, The Shadow of the Lynx by Victoria Holt. Uh, I have only one other book by her, and I haven't read yet, and it's called The Mistress of Melon. I am assuming that's how it's pronounced. But it's a uh, book that I guess is considered to be very much in the tradition of, like, Rebecca and... Uh, the Mistress of Malo, or the Lady of Malo, sorry. I'm mixing two names up, so. But that'd be Dorothy Eden. So Dorothy Eden is uh, the author of Lady of Malo. Uh, Mistress of Mellon is Victoria Holt. And, of course, we have another great Gothic author, which I've already done a book by, and that is um, Mary Stewart. So, check out Victoria Holt. If you can find this book, check it out too. If you like Jane Eyre and um, Victorian Gothic novels, or no Gothic novels that take place during the Victorian era, I would check this out. So, I recommend it. And before we go, uh, I had a plan for what I was going to be reading. That plan has kind of fallen apart because I got distracted by V.C. Andrews. I was going to read... Uh, uh, an Anne Rice book. I just finished an Anne Rice book that I had started over a year ago and put down, and so I read this. I only read about half of it or so. So um, I put it down. I was going to read another Anne Rice book, but I got distracted by V.C. Andrews by Flowers in the Attic, which I have not read yet, and I plan to do an review when I'm done. This copy is not mine. I'm hoping to get a copy soon of my own. This is actually a library copy, and I, I'm afraid I won't get finished with it before it goes back. So I've gotten distracted by V.C. Andrews. And I most recently purchased uh, V.C. Andrews' Castile Family Saga uh, by Lifetime, from Lifetime, those movies. And so I've just started watching the first one in it. And I also recently got the Flowers in the Attic Lifetime movies, too. And I've watched all of them but one. And, of course, I'm reading the first the book that the first one's based on. So <laughs> I've gotten very distracted. I've gotten really into it because it's... it's it's something. We'll just say that. But before we go, and that's kind of a preview of some of the stuff that's coming towards you, although I don't know what the book will be that I'll be doing next for a review, because I have several lined up that I have already read and I just need to do reviews on, is my book. I'm going to uh, promote my book, The Curse of Ridge House, which if you've been keeping up with my videos, you already know what the book's about. You know, Veronica Gale, uh, not Veronica Gale, sorry. Um, Brianna Gale uh, comes to the mysterious house of uh, Rich House as she comes to work for a rich uh, elderly businesswoman, and she becomes her secretary, and she falls in love with Quentin Peters, 
but tragedy strikes in the house and she finds herself in the midst of bizarre a bizarre mystery and I really don't want to give too much away. So, um, you know, that's kind of it. It's, you know, it's very gothic romance. You know, there's romance, there's suspense, there's mystery, and there's a curse. So please check that. You can check that out on Amazon uh, in both paperback and Kindle form. And uh, please like my facebook page for my book it's the curse of ridge house it's the official facebook page that's on there and the only should be the only facebook page that's on there also you can check out my author uh page that's on amazon if you go to buy the book and you can only get it at amazon well let me remind you it's only available there and please check me out on Twitter and Instagram because I have both those under Ed Lewis. The links for all these will be on, will be down below in the description. The link for purchasing my book on Amazon, for checking out my author page, for my Instagram and my Twitter. And that's pretty much it. So thank you, and you know, don't forget that this weekend. Uh, tomorrow we spring forward, although it's not quite spring yet. So we're going to lose an hour on the clock, so make sure to spring those clocks forward tonight or early tomorrow morning or whenever you get up tomorrow. So that's pretty much it. So join me next time as I'll review something else. It might be a movie, it might be another book, it might be a short story because I've got, you know, things to review and I just don't know what I want to review next. So thank you and... See you next time. Bye-bye.